Talk about it with Fran Jazz. Today's special guest is New York's first premier cannabis industry resources hub, workforce training center, and organic cultivation supply store. Today's guest is the new Grow Center. Thank you guys for being here. How you guys doing today? Doing well. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for Actually, yeah, thank you for having me. We're at the actual new Grow Center located in New Rochelle. So definitely thank you for having me. You felt very comfortable. You thought it was your place. Yeah, too comfortable. <laughs> too comfortable. It must be the mic and everything. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you, man, for, for having us and uh, giving us an opportunity to, to speak about the work that we do and, um, and more importantly, being able to hopefully showcase and give more education around the cannabis industry in, in New York State and how uh, our communities could better, you know, be a part of this, and especially those that have been impacted by the war on drugs. Um, that uh, that obviously have lost out on these on these opportunities, but um, but it's again, thank you again for for having us, and um, I look forward to to the conversation. Absolutely, likewise. Thank you for having me. Let's let's start off with with introducing yourselves, who you are, and who you are to the business. Agale, pa. Um, David Elliott, um, one of the founders of the business. Uh, been involved in cannabis for a long time in what they call the legacy market or the medical market as it used to be when it became legal uh, in Oregon. I have businesses in Uruguay, in Brazil, uh, multiple states in, in the, uh, multiple states here in the United States, uh, different industries. I'm, I'm a businessman, entrepreneur, slash cannabis uh, aficionado, if you want to call it. Uh, to the business, um, I'm sort of like the... I'm the grumpy guy of the business, but also the one that brings uh, most of the knowledge when it comes down to cannabis. Uh, we have a great group here, obviously. Uh, we'll get more into it, I guess, in the future about what everybody does in the business and how we, you know, how we use the information, how we organize the information. Obviously, um, it takes more than one person to be able to do everything, and it's, it's six of us. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it there for now. Nice. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm a, I like to be a storyteller. I talk a lot more. Um, and, um, so for me, again, Alejandro Alvarez, one of the co-founders of, of, uh, the new growth center, David and I know each other for probably over 25 years now. Um, we, uh, you know, we started here in Urshel. It's a blessing to be back in Urshel to be able to do this work. And, um, we, um, you know, to his point, we are definitely from the legacy side, we uh we've done a lot of things and taken a lot of risks to um to be here today and i i think we're i would say we were blessed to um to be able to be having this conversation with you right and not a lot of people can say that the risks that they've taken um in a sense can uh lead them to uh this this level of of opportunity right um, David and I have been in, again, to this point in the legacy market, we've done, um, you know, everything from hustling on the streets to doing, um, cultivation out in, Yo, you know, West that Coast. Yo, out, cut that shit out. It's, you have, you, they, they can't, they can't get us anymore. It's over 10 years. I know that. I've done my that research. Gave me goosebumps for a second. I was like, yo. But we're over 10 years. They can't bro. get us anymore. Uh, so we're good. Statues They're, of limitations. Yeah, they can't get us no more, brother. That's a, that's a blessing. And, and this, this is, is real. You see, this is real. This is real fear. You see, this is not even like, I, I'm paranoid over it. We don't even do anything. No, bro. And, just like, and, and I'm telling you, we're good. And I speak comfortably because of statues of limitation, right? Of the things that we had to do to get here and gain this knowledge um and and work through the prohibitions that that the can the cannabis industry was right um and with that said i think that it brings it brought a lot of of uh different experiences you know growing cannabis out west he grew cannabis down south and not just out west but also down in in south america which is dealing with two different type of terrains um and dealing with different varieties of um political climates politi political climates 1000 percent. and just to your point also pest that the pests the just the variables that come with growing the plant right yeah. um and and for him and for us you know for me i i spent a lot of time you know about two to three years close to close to three years i didn't get the whole three years to uh to work out west and growing cannabis and um and in that, to that point, you know, as you said, man, you get you get goosebumps. I always think about, you know, the first time I got raided, right, out there in California, 
right? Even though I had the right the right permits, I had all the right things, I still had the situation where you had the police hanging off the, the helicopters, right? I honestly thought it was my next door neighbor doing some things that he wasn't supposed to and ended up being being uh, the law enforcement. So, you know, I share this story with you and the stories of this is that because that's what got us here, right? And, and because of that, um, you know, we created the New Growth Center to be able, again, to educate people from the experiences we had, whether good or bad, risky or not, and, um, and all the lessons we've learned we're looking to be able to transfer that over that information to, uh, to again, the, the people that, that we're working with. And, and hopefully, again, they, they're able to create a sustainable cultivation or a, a sustainable cannabis business. When was that, that and you got raided in college? Oof. Shoot, that was about seven years ago. So what were the laws then? Because I know federally is different than city. And yeah, state. so I, I I got I got raided because at the time, and I'm and I'm sure you know this, it's like they really didn't touch outdoor grows. But if you had a greenhouse, they they tended to show up because you could grow a lot more. And and it's it was, I don't know, it was just and it it just seemed the way when I got raided, they they left half of my grow operation still you know going and my other half which was outdoors they they left that i had 99 girls outside and i had like 75 in the greenhouse and they cut down my 75. and that's the, that's the that, exactly that's the point right uh when a medical car at that time back to 2015-16 you could have up to 100 plants mm -hmm. uh for you know if you had enough medical cards that was your your cap when you have a greenhouse it can't count from the top how many yeah. plants you have how many runs are you doing so uh, they show up, but it, the police is, is always involved. Uh, not to cut you off, but in Europe, they said thing. Uh, we were licensed number 14 in the country to do business there, and we got raided by the DEA uh, for no reason. They just showed up. They've never seen anything like that, and that's just uh, the police department and the government itself not having enough information and education to know what's going on. Uh, I got to my site and I have all of my workers, you know, with hands behind their back and, you know, against my, one of the containers or the Connex box. Um, you know, funny story about that, <laughs> where he asked me to, to provide samples of the cannabis I had, because I told him I had two different strains. He was like, oh yeah, give me sample, I need two strains. And I, I went, I went to a plant, I cut up uh, a butt out of the plant, walked down two aisles and I cut another one and I told him it was, you know, different plants, it was the same strain. And uh, that just tells you, you know, the lack of uh, education and, you know, just knowledge all around. I would, I would add just a funny story about lack of education and then on the reverse on myself was after the, I got raided the first time, um, you know, you, you know, you put a lot of work into these girls and the, and the, and the plants that we call them girls, right? The plants that, that were growing. Um, and it was heartbreaking to see them all cut at the stem in my greenhouse, right? I had them all on trellises. They were all just, just, you know, it was, it was heartbreaking. Uh, I had a situation where, um, about maybe three weeks later, I had, it looked like the same helicopters showing up to another site because I was running two sites. And I didn't, I thought as again was the, the authority and I knew I had all the right paperwork. And I'm, I'm at this time, I was like, I'm giving them, wasn't probably the best idea, but I'm giving them the finger and saying, yo, fuck that. I'm not going anywhere. Come down and, and, uh, you know, have this conversation as to his point, you know, to educating and, and, and speaking to the authorities. But what they were telling me was that behind my farm, there was a big uh, forest fire. So they weren't, there wasn't the authorities actually telling me to get out. It was, it was the, the rangers that were actually trying to turn off the uh, fires, <laughs> telling me that I got to get the hell out because I might die. Right. Yeah. But, but it, again, it's to even how we started this conversation, we get, we get so, you know, the, the stigma and then you get so paranoid, right? At, you know, when you, you were in the, involved in this space that even a situation like that where it wasn't even the, you know, the authorities, they were actually trying to protect us because there was a forest fire that you're willing even to stay on your farm to protect the work that you're doing, right? And, um, and again, that's for us. I think that's one of the things that we bring to this table in the work that we do is that we remember how it all started for us, right? And it wasn't, it's like working on the farm, going through what we go through, waking up at three in the morning, four in the morning. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy job, man. Anybody that wants to cultivate has to have a certain level of determination and, and grit 
to to do this type of work because it's not it's not an easy one. There's so many variables that that come into it, and that's why again we started this business together as friends, and now you know as business partners as well, with, alongside with our, our other co-founders, um, to be able to bring again this information and this this uh, education to uh, to the people that that want to be in this space and really want to you know cultivate healthy plants, organic plants, and things that are actually medicinal to themselves and or artis artisanal, right? Because this is, you know, you could live on both sides of this. It's an, uh, it's, uh, an artistic space to be in as well because I'm sure David will talk about the different strains and the different things that he's crossbreed and how he process things. Um, is There's an artistic component, creative component to, to doing this type of work. Also, too, uh, another thing. I mean, we, we got we went so far sideways on, on what we were talking about, you know, but talking about the New Growth Center and what we do. With all that being said, uh, we're here to bridge the gap, uh, you know, between the community, also on law enforcement, the, you know, any type of enforcement, the, the government itself. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what best describes us is that, you know, we're here to be that bridge and be able to educate and, you know, Try to homogenize everything mm -hmm. a little bit. So the laws today, do they still allow the federal government to bother you? The federal government can bother you. I mean, yeah, it's, yes, of course, a Schedule One drug. Uh, apparently, it's been uh, put up for the scheduling to a Schedule Three, which gives the drug a medicinal value. Um, and we've talked about this a lot uh, amongst some of the business partners because this is going to bring... This is going to make a, a little bit of a ripple effect uh, amongst the whole Im industry. Uh, once you dis do uh, deschedule a drug from one to three, so it goes from no medicinal value to a drug that has medicinal value, now the production of this drug needs to be done at a pharmaceutical level. So all these uh, cultivation sites that have been operating on the rec market, I'm pretty sure cannot pass on uh, NSA or... Um, SGS, uh, CGMP certifications, um, because you know they're they're rec farm and they're not growing it as a medicine. It's a it's just another product. Um, so that's going to be it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I think even the, the selling is going to be a problem. Um, we're at a point where in uh, general admission for licenses, we're open for people to apply. And I think you know after that happens, I don't know if they're going to open the market to everybody, but. Uh, most, you know, it's going to be a, a federal thing once once they put it out that this needs to be sold in pharmacies or uh, pharmaceutical grade uh, product. Then even the distillations, the, the extraction processes, all the standard operation procedures are going to have to be looked at uh, with a microscope, uh, and all the fees and fines that are going to come with that, right? Uh, so, yeah, the government is still messing around, and they'll always mess around. They want to cut, understandably so. Uh, you want to play the game, you got to pay. But it, uh, it's being set up for the big, the big guys to take over, obviously, right? Absolutely. I would add, I just want to add to it, you know, to give a little bit also more context to your question. Um, there's different levels to the point that you're, you're asking, right? If, like, we're still being federally prosecuted in a sense or, you know, the prosecution of, <clears throat> of this space is still alive. Um, and can we be prosecuted, you know, federally? Yeah, um, yes, we can. You know, for example, if we get caught moving from New Jersey to New York and we're bringing, pro you know, by go to a dispensary in New Jersey, even though it's still legal here in New York, if us crossing the George Washington Bridge, potentially we could get in trouble. You need right? a medical card. It's right. the only way. But federally is illegal, illegal, too. Yeah. And but what but the, I think what's important to add to this is not the the limitations on on um, authority in the sense of the uh, law enforcement, but also the limitations that comes on this, again, still being federally illegal on banking, our ability to do marketing, our, you know, the compliance that we have to go through, right? It's it's a hindrance on us being able to do business. Um, it's It's been, you know, an example for us. We had a situation where, you know, and he could talk further more, where on 420, the, the system shut down on us. You know what I mean? What do you mean? What system? The, our sales, our platform. Oh, like the OS sales. system. Yeah. Wow. So, and it was shut down by by our provider. And, and when we reached out, it was like, oh, we're, we're under investigation in a sense of, or not investigation and like they're investigating, but they wanted to go through our, our stuff 
to make sure that we weren't a cannabis company and so forth. And even though we're selling, you know, ingredients for agriculture, it was a hindrance for us. You got what I mean? And and those type of situations is something that happens and it happens to them. You know, he has his own CBD company. He has been dealing with this for a very long time across the board. And actually one of the main reasons why we felt as a team that we should come together because it wasn't just the, the understanding of the plant that David brings, right. but it was also the understanding of living in the CBD world, right? And understanding compliance, the headaches, what we can and cannot say, how we can promote on social media, you know what I mean? All these things are hindrance and it's because of the federal enforcement, right? It's like, it's so we do have to do double the work to get to get what we where we need to get to compare to to many other to many other businesses right and and with that said i think this is a very much a a you know uh in parallel to the prohibition of liquor right when when liquor became legal again we're in that space right now again where smaller companies are trying to become breweries they're trying to become you know we're trying to you know grow in in this in this space but you to david's point the way these things are set up, big, big money is the way the system is set up. Big money is meant to win. Right. And um, and that's something, again, for the new growth center that we're looking to, again, to bridge. Right. We want to be able to at least bring this information to the community as soon as possible. Um, teach them about the opportunities, teach them about the licenses. Um, create an ecosystem here locally and hopefully allow those people that usually are last in line to take advantage of these opportunities can do so, right? And again, and even if, if big pharma takes over or big companies take over, I mean, listen, if you buy my company out for $100 million or you buy another company out for $100 million or $10 million, whatever the case may be, it's at least new money coming in into our communities that, that we serve and the people that look like us, Right. So, um, so for us, that again continues to be extremely important. So, what exactly is the growth center? You you educate people, and you actually provide them with the tools to grow. Correct. So we um, so we started off with with the idea that we you know the concept of shovels and picks, both physically and and uh, I guess educationally, right? So we wanted to be able to uh, be able to provide ingredients, equipment that are, are organic, right, uh, equipment that's energy efficient, um, and then with the idea and the mentality that everything that we sell and we do is sustainable, right? We don't want to create uh, a negative impact on the environment by being a part of this and being part of this space. But with that, you're also consuming this this plant, right? And, and it was also very important for us to find the ingredients and the um, uh, that we have that can be that can again when you're putting this into your body is healthy uh, David and I are both you know we don't agree on a lot of shit <laughs> sorry <laughs> but a lot True. of things <laughs> but what we do agree what we can and we always agree on is this right like I him and I would never disagree on what we have on these shelves because we understand that this these products bring um, quality uh, a quality uh, finish or quality flower and again, when it's being consumed, the 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 person that's taking that in knows that it's it's something healthy. They don't have anything negative. I mean, bad getting put into their bodies. And on the educational side, we understood that many people, just the way we had to learn, right? We could come into a store like this, and we have no idea how to use these these products. So we wanted to be able to then also give people the opportunity to learn how to be able to cultivate, how to process, how to be bud tenders, and again, bridge that gap in the community as this industry was growing in a way that was, no pun intended, organic, right? Um, but at the same time, in a way that is sustainable and efficient. Um, because again, we, we do look at our approach and the work that we do as a triple bottom line, right? It's not just profits, it's the community and it's also our environment, right? So those are three things that we always keep in mind, our trifecta, and as, as we do work, and lastly, our con consultations, right? So we do provide consulting opportunities um, as after people do, you know, come through, use our products. If they want to get education, they could get educated on how to use it or potentially find a, uh, a workforce opportunity and become a butt tender or something of that nature. And then with that, if they want to take it a, a step uh, deeper, then we do, we do consultation 
And for all this that I'm speaking, David is pretty much the backbone to all that, right? So David does... I wanted to talk about this, actually, exactly, because you were yeah. talking about the products, uh, Vital Garden Supply. It's a brand, a company who makes their own inputs, and it's something that I've been using for a decade, and we do great work with them. Uh, these products were already certified organic in Oregon, in Washington, and California, and once we brought them here, I think we got 30 different products that we got certified organic uh, through NOFA, the Northeast uh, Organic Association. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> North <laughs> Farmers Association. There we go. My bad. So many, so many acronyms. <laughs> there are just so many acronyms to remember, yeah. man. For so, real. yeah, all certified organic. And, you know, again, like Alejandro said, uh, we care about what we put in our body uh, sometimes. <laughs> um, but this is most importantly. So, um, yeah, this is for food or cannabis. You know, we're, we're cannabis centric, but uh, I bet you've never tried a tomato until you've grown, you've grown with these. You know, yeah. like, the, the taste, how pungent they are. For example, the Vital Veg, it's a it's vegetable. Uh, it's a it's a brewed vegetable. Uh, that's how you get all, all your um, all your nutrients from. Uh, the fish, the Vital Fish is a fish product. So it actually has fish in it. And the, the Vital Flour Powder is fish bone. So you your bone meal. So you know, they use all organic and natural uh, ingredients for for the nutrients, and it shows. I mean, they have the track record of I don't know how many cups. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and, and, you know, say how many numbers, I don't know, but I know there are many in, uh, on the organic realm. Um, and then I know one of our partners is here, we're growing, uh, his first time growing at his home using this product. Today's what? May what? 20th. 30th. 30th. The plant is seven feet tall. Wow. It's May 30th. So... Uh, the sauce works. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. So... Everything you guys offer and teach, is it for indoor growth and outdoor growth? Yeah, correct. Nice. Yeah, so our goal, our goal is to, you know, that's why we mentioned, you know, we have those three processes, right? The, the, for selling of the, the products, the education, the consultation. Um, we, as far as on uh, the, the, the environment of grow, we do everything from doing indoor grow. We help people set those up. We help. We can help set people up with their um, greenhouses, and also set up with their indoor grows. And with that said, there's also a level of understanding that needs to be, uh, that you know, that needs to be taken into consideration in which is the space, right? You know, so there's going to be places. To your question of indoor grows, for example, we are looking to work with a lot of the urban communities where they have minimal spaces to be able to create minimalist type of grow um, processes, right? Where people can come in, they could create, and you'll hopefully we'll be able to showcase some of the tents that we have and and what we have available um, to to show that. Way to go! <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Stop right there. <laughs> we can start the next thought. <laughs> scraping all day, baby. So, so scraping all day. We back on. <laughs> Let's get it. So, how do you recommend people start? I don't know how to say because you don't you don't only smoke this. There's other ways of ingesting it. How do you recommend people that are brand new to get into whatever they want to get into? Is if it's CBD, CBG, THC, smoking it. Uh, first, you gotta identify. first you gotta yeah. identify what is it that you're gonna use it for which it's what i think the biggest gap between the consumer and the and the product is knowing what do you what are you using the product for um depends on your you know illnesses or or you know whatever it is you're treating anxiety or uh you're going to use different cannabinoids whether it's cbd cbg thc now we talked about this before uh, a plant that we grew here, Serenity, which is the strain, which uh, it's a CBG predominant, 0% THC, consider hemp. Um, it's uh, it's anti-inflammatory and it's antibacterial. Uh, and that helps in combination with CBD and THC, as I've known uh, through a medicine man that I know who treats many patients to cure cancer. Uh, Treat it. Sometimes if it's too big, you can't fight it. Uh, and I, I think one of the things that we're going to talk about is uh, what is the difference between both of them or what is the, the misconception of CBD or, or THC, right? Um, two things that I thought about was, one, misconception is that it has no medicinal value. That's a misconception. It does. 
And another misconception is that it can cure everything. It does not cure everything. Uh, I'll give you an example. Myself, I have a few herniated discs. You can't cure a herniated disc with just using cannabis. You'll, rel you'll relieve the, the inflammation from the, the joints and wherever it is you have the, the issue, but you're not going to be able to cure something. But it does help to soothe and, and deal with pain. Cancer patients use it, you know, they, they can't eat. Radiation has them all messed up and they can't eat. Uh, represses uh, their appetite. Cannabis does that for them. It opens up their appetite. Um, so I, I think knowing what you're going to use it for uh, will determine what product and how you're going to intake it. Different products that we create, a matter of CBD that we sell here. We have, we have a cream right behind you, actually. Uh, that will be a t for topical use. This one? Yeah. You can open that one. You can keep that one. Matter CBD nourishing lotion. It's amazing. What does this do? That is for, it's anti-inflammatory. That is our uh, economy, uh, let's say, item. This is something that you use every Smells day. Amazing. So if you have like arthritis and your joints hurt and you need to use uh, every day, so we, we build a cream that was economical for everyday use. It's about 100 milligrams of CBD um, in, the, in, the, in the glass. Mm -hmm. And then we have another one uh, that's 200 more potent. So again, knowing what you're treating will determine what products are you going to be using. Something that you don't see a lot, but you might see uh, capsules, right, for injection, or um, what do you call this, uh, the suppositories? What's that? Suppositories are like uh, things that you put up the rectum. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are made with coconut oil, uh, cacao, uh, different uh, organic uh, inputs to be able to create this suppositories for people with colon cancer or mm -hmm. prostate cancer. Um, you need to be able to get to the area quickly with, with, you know, with the cannabinoids. And when you ingest a product, when you eat, let's say, a gummy, you only get to keep about 5%, 10% of that. Mm -hmm. You actually don't get those 10 full milligrams. You don't process that. You pee it out. Um, so something that uh, gets to your system quickly would be you know, through keeping it in your gums. So a tincture, keep it in your gums. Don't swallow it. It will seep right through or um, to a rectum. Um, so again, knowing what you're treating will determine what kind of product you're gonna be using. And I, I think to, to David's point, um, it's, it's, it's important to understand why, um, what, what you're taking in based on, on what your, uh, yeah, I guess let's use the word situation is, right? If you're doing rec recreationally, yeah, obviously you go smoke, you do the gummies, you're looking for the euphoria, you're looking for the high. Um, if you're looking and using this for medicinal purposes, there are different ways for, for you to consume that to have the highest impact, right? So to, his, to David's point, if, you do, if you're consuming edibles, for example, right, you're going through your first intestine. By the time it gets through the first intestine and gets to the second intestine, if you have something that you're trying to get to your colon and to your prostate, Right, it's not going to make it there because it's already going to be broken down by the time it gets through the whole, that whole in uh, digestive system, right? Um, and and reason again, we're speaking about this because again, we do as as business owners of of and being in this industry in cannabis, we do see cannabis as medicine, right? As we teach our classes, we speak about the endocannabinoid system that that exists within our bodies. Right, we don't we don't only have just an immune system, but we also have an endocannabinoid system in our bodies. Right, our immune system helps us fight viruses and and fights diseases and things of that nature, and and try to exterminate them, like literally exterminate them. Whereas you have an endocannabinoid system that goes to these places that the immune system already worked on, right, and then repairs them. So what it is is that the endocannabinoid system is constantly going to spots in your bodies that is stressed out or in need of repair and creating new healthy blood cells to, to allow you to continue to exist, right? And when, when people say in that, that um, cannabis can cure something, it, that, it's not that it cures anything, it actually just filtrates you, right? Like it, it cleanses you in a sense. So when you're taking in these type of um, uh, Rick Simpson oil, for example, which is one of the strains that 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 we that strains, I strains no, it's a Rick Simpson strain, oil. Is, sorry, it's a, it's process. a process. And it's an old school process for calling crude oil. Um, but yeah, go ahead. No, 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 and I, I don't Rick Simpson oil has a, yes, also Thank chlorophyll. You. you know, it's the whole plant. You don't you don't take out the chlorophyll or anything out of the plant. So it's imperative you grow organic with no pesticides and stuff like that. But it's super potent. 
-hmm. super potent. And um, go, go ahead. Move no, yourself. so please add to this. I, mean, I want you to jump in, brother. Um, is And again, it's the impact that this particular process to this point, you see, and this is why we're business partners. <laughs> as I can tell, as you know, I, I have certain understandings of certain things, but he's a specialist um, in, in the work that we do. But there is, there is certain um, mechanisms and uh, ways to, le to use cannabis, right, that can make you healthier. I'll use an example uh, in a story where I was sent to Colombia because my grandma was on her deathbed, right? And I ended up bringing Rick Simpson oil to, uh, to my grandma, okay? She had Alzheimer's. She had really bad dementia, Alzheimer's. Um, and the drugs they were giving her was really what was killing her. It wasn't the Alzheimer's or the dementia. It was all the, the anti, you know, uh, psychosis. I forget, sorry. I I'm, I'm, don't know the medical terms. But all, those, all the drugs that she needed to take to keep her neurosis in, in check pretty much, right? And um, I introduced her to, to Rick Simpson oil, right? Thinking that, you know, it was our last bet. And, um, and she, uh, she got back out of bed, right? She started walking again. She started remembering. She started becoming mi abuelita. She was, she was that person that woke up at four in the morning. She started cooking again. Like she wanted to, to be la abuelita again. And, and she gave us about like another, like, I would say maybe like eight years more right from that and and she lived a very healthy life right and and uh, an enriched life and that's the, the the point of what we're trying to speak about here that you know this plant it's something the plant is not just about the high but the actual molecular structure of it exists within our own bodies right and that and we have the exact receptors needed in order to receive the medicine and and what this this plant can potentially give to us because we again um naturally produce endo you know endocannabinoids in our own body to keep us healthy but when we intake organic you know cannabis it increases that 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 um that intake but with something that david is doing now right that he's using uh what do you, what's the plant that you're growing now that allows us to cleanse our system and uh, helps us receive the cannabinoids in a in a better way. You mean the with the CBG plants and yes, stuff? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, but that's because we're doing a cannabinoid like layering of cannabinoids. So mm -hmm. it's like awareness, mm -hmm. uh, anti-inflammatory, and then you can get a head high. But I want I want to touch back on some things that he said, uh, which is how we perceive the plant. It's medicine, right? Uh, the I grew twenty thousand kilos in Uruguay. Yep. Uh, uh, I've done thousands and thousands over thousands of plants in, in Oregon. Uh, I have my own lab. I've been in the industry forever. And I used to smoke weed to get high because I wanted to get high because it was fun. But with being in the industry and, and, and using the plant, I, I realized that I don't smoke to get high because it was fun. I, was, I had issues. I had anxiety. I had this. So I was treating these issues with cannabis. So when you start looking at it like that, then you can properly use it, you know? Um, we, for example, we we're working on a product with Matter CBD, one of our manufacturers in, uh, in Colorado, which is a, a THC or a CBD or CBG, whatever cannabis you want to put in. It's, a, you know, the inhalers for asthma. Yeah. So you take it and it goes automatically into your, your, your bloodstream um, with a fast delivery, uh, with a fast delivery system that, that they put together. And uh, when I see that kind of stuff, it's like, well, that took the fun away from rolling a joint passing it around with your friends, you know, so it, it, it is a medicine. So when I see people, oh, let's go to the club and let's smoke a blunt before we go to the club. Well, you can't go to the club sober. And I'm not saying I'm the one that goes sober. I, sm <laughs> I smoke. I'm that guy. I take two edibles before I go. I can't. I, you know, I, I have, maybe I have an anxiety issue with people. I don't want to be around. I want to be in my own world. And, but I understand those things. So I treat it differently, you know. Um, and I think when people understand it like that, then I... We shouldn't even have a problem with kids. I have a 16-year-old kid, first practice today at the New Rochelle Varsity football team. Um, and Danny has been around cannabis since he's five years old, heavy. I mean, with uh, gloves and a garbage bag over him trimming buds <laughs> when he was like six years old. And that kid has never touched uh, cannabis. He, he doesn't want to smoke it. He want to touch it. You know, it's like uh, he understands what it's for. Um, and I, I, I hope... If, if there's something left after we're done with the New Growth Center, when, I, when I'm out of this earth, that we were able to teach the new generations up and coming how to safely use it. 
Um, I would say though, bro, though, but also tell the story around, and I will too, even my on my end is not, and I like that you brought this up, bro. Is not just the the new generation, but the old generation, bro. Like our parents came around, right? Like you know, my mother, we, my mother yeah. threw away. I don't know how many joints that I had <laughs> rolled one time. <laughs> And then my dad now is the biggest pothead. <laughs> yes, dad. You're the biggest pothead. <laughs> that dude can smoke now. Yeah. He, he likes it, but it helps him out, you know? But those older generations, it was accepted on a Friday night to drink a bottle of whiskey and get trashed. And then, you know, then that would, you know, liver cancer and all those different shit, and that was acceptable. Uh, and now they're coming around. My dad doesn't drink anymore. He, since he started smoking weed, stop drinking. My dad does not drink alcohol. He doesn't eat sugars. He doesn't eat bread. Um, He's holistic. Dude, yeah. it, 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 you know, uh, this, you know, when you're in Oregon in the woods, you meet a lot of interesting people. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> very, and, very, very interesting for sure. <laughs> and dude, this eccentric, eccentric is probably this, the word. <laughs> this magic, this magic, this magic man showed up in the woods and said, she will reveal yourself to you. So I don't know if you noticed, but when you smoke weed, even the first times, it's like you feel like you're out of your body, like you almost you can see yourself from up here. Yeah. And you have a second voice and stuff like that. Uh, I use cannabis a lot for thinking. Like I like to think. I, I like to put myself in a different perspective and think and think and think and think. Usually the the worst angle I try to look at, you know. Um, but cannabis can help you see your life. Cannabis can help you realize certain things. Because you, it's, a, it's, it's psychotic, so you do, you, you, it helps you exercise your brain. Um, you definitely did mushrooms, right? I own a mushroom company. I could tell, man. I'm the, fir <laughs> I'm the first person's licensed to own a mushroom company. I didn't want to bring that up today. I, Los, I, oh, Los, <laughs> don't tell these motherfuckers. I'm like, uh, yeah, we're, we're a very good Oregon license? Oregon. The only, oh, okay, we're okay, the okay, first okay. Co in all of the United right, States. Right. There's no other state that uh, mushrooms are legal. We're the first company to have a, a vertically integrated uh, production, service, and facilitation. Amazing. My business partner, Andreas Met, who I met in, um, in cannabis. Well, I met him in jiu-jitsu, but, you know, then, you know, he's, he, was, he had the biggest distillery for THC at, at the time. And, yeah, definitely mushrooms is uh, it's huge for me. Yeah, definitely. So, so what do you think, if you were to compare mushrooms and, and weed, weed is just like dipping your toe in, right? Yeah, you got to get ready for a realm. Like, you, you're going to change realms. Weed you know? is like you're just, you're just rubbing your soul. You're mm. just rubbing it, right? I would say this, right? So, mushrooms <laughs> to me is like you're, when you take mushrooms, like I, I, do, I like to do it like every eight months, ten months, I like to do a big dose, like a macro dose instead of a, a micro. And I recommend everybody to do a macro dose, not a micro. Because if you don't understand what it how, can how do many, to you. How, much, how many milligrams? Uh, for a macro, five grams is good. Five grams. Yeah, that's good. Macro is good. Then, you know, you can do eight. I've done eight. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to need a facilitator with you when you take eight. You know, like somebody's going to have to be around you. Um, it's intense. But if you don't understand what it can do to you and what it can do for you, yeah. then microdosing is just, it's like taking uh, an opioid. You know, it's just like uh, I'm soothing something, but I don't understand it. You know, like I don't know how it works. Uh, so if I do a high dose of, of, of mushrooms, to me, it's like, I call it cleaning the attic. It's like my brain gets like all the boxes in the right place. Everything's TD up. It's like, I understand everything now. Mm. I know what I got to do. I clean my fucking closet out and now I can just go back to, you know, doing what I have to do and, and I move, you know, knowing where I have to go. We call it resetting the system like a computer, right? Like yeah. when you empty your cookies, you empty everything and you let, you know, you clean your hard drive. Right. Um, well, it's usually when my wife wanted to look at the Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we're not. Let's not talk about that. Right. They're not that they're not that type of podcast. <laughs> more let's keep it stay to the mushrooms. Um, but with that said, I think David. You know, not I think I David and I. You know, again, um, have connected on various levels, right? And. Um, because of the experiences we have, many of our team members as well have a certain respect, not necessarily affinity to it, but a level of respect of what these things can do for you. Um, to your point, you know, kind of, I mean, I, I agree, I agree with David that, you know, for us, you know, potentially cannabis is scratching the surface, mushrooms can um, take you to another level, but I've also been in situations with people that have never smoked, right? And they'll smoke, and it 
they'll have a, a similar reaction without the hallucinations, right? So, which what I mean by that is that cannabis and mushrooms, what it does to you both is it peels you like an onion to his point of where clearing up your operating system, right? It, it, it makes you face yourself a lot of times, mm -hmm. right? Or not, well, all the time. Like, there's no... Escaping way, either. <laughs> there, there's no way to run away from yourself, right? And that's why people, I think, have fear of, of the consumption, the feeling, you know, even through cannabis, right? Like, people say, oh, I feel paranoid. It's not, you know, you're feeling paranoid for sure, but just think about what you're thinking about, right? Like, what's going through your mind that's making you paranoid, right? What is worrying you to get you to that point? And also, and it needs to be spoken, it's also where we are with the industry, right? Because these processes that we went through, right? Like smoking and going through this process and feeling that way, you, it, you do that through smoking uh, an organic product. Now, if you're gonna get any product that, you know, using salt base and you're, using, you're smoking a strain that uh, it's, uh, 300% THC and they grew it for crystal count. So, so the plant looks like super frosty. So there are ways to generically make the plant grow more crystals, but not necessarily more cannabinoids or more terpenes. That's why a lot of these flowers have no smell and no taste, but they get you super high. That's not the intention of what the plant was made to be. Mm -hmm. So growing at home your plant and going through that process, like a holistic process of respecting it and, 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 and loving the process, you know, while you're at it, that, that's where you find the discovery. At least that's how, that's how I did it. And if you do it for fun, if you're just doing it to get high, then that, that's not what it's for, bro. You have, you have an issue, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and but he said the word respect, right? And we go back to that for both, to your book. first question, you know, previous with the mushrooms, the hallucinogenics, and, and dealing with cannabis, right? If, if you're dealing with this plant or, or any of these things, you know, you have to have respect for it. Right. And and with that said, this is, you know, cannabis has been around for thousands of years. I mean, you you're fine. You find cannabis plants inside uh, bureaus um, in you know, in uh, in China man you know, freaking four or five thousand years ago. And you you still you know, this plant has been around around us for so many years. Right. Even, you know, even with my grandma, I always I also say besides the story with the Alzheimer's, I knew that she was going to take the, the cannabis because one day we went to a farm in Colombia. Right. It was it was, you know, it was a family outing. We get to this farm and she sees this big fucking cannabis plant. And she I didn't know she saw it. I didn't even see it. Like she's that nice. <laughs> so I didn't even see it. And she goes, I, oh, my God, I tell this. I tell the story all the time. I'm like, hey. And I'm like, Abuelita, ¿qué pasó? And you know, you're in Colombia, you thinking motherfucking Guerrero just showing up, like, you know, <laughs> I thought, like, I was like, like, Abuelita, we out, right? And then she's like, look at that. And, she, and she's talking about the fucking plant, right? And then she goes to my boy, Hector. He was the guy that owned Hector Fabio. You know, he's dealing with some stuff himself and he uses the plant himself. But um, this gentleman, he, it was his farm. And um, we ended up taking, taking the plant. And I tell Abuela, and I told God rest, you know, rest her soul. Um, I was like, Abuelita, you're funny though, because you make me knock it down, but you're not bringing that back into town. I know I'm gonna be the one smug, cause I'm the one that has to smuggle it back from La Finca back to the town. <laughs> and I'm like, and she's like, yeah, I can't do it. I was like, but Abuela, you're probably the least suspect. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you, you could get, you could probably walk through the town, and nobody's gonna say oh. shit. And but but with that said, she she was also again using the plant for her arthritis. She used the plant for uh, a variety of different purposes, right? She used it for teas to calm herself down and her anxiety and so forth. And um, and again, to your point, right, of 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 the different levels to these things, right, and how this can be used as medicine and, and psychotropics of sorts, right? Is is again, cannabis is a is a can be a lot less um, intense than dealing with mushrooms, right? To Absolutely. your first, sequence, first question, right? To all that. It's, yeah, but don't, don't, there's not also call it like a gateway drug. No, right? it's That's, not. It's not. It'd be no, like, oh, no. you do this and then you end up doing this. And no, it's like. No, it's not. It's not saying, I'm not suggesting that. What I'm suggesting is that both of them are going to make you face yourself, is what I'm suggesting. Yeah. It's like. One more intense one, than the other. One more than the other, right? Yeah. One is more intense than the other. That's all I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting yeah. that. 
one is going to make you face yourself because, again, that paranoia that people say that they have when they smoke it is really that they're dealing with their own fears, they're dealing with their own, their own demons and securities and so forth, right? The same thing that you're going to face if you do any type of hallucinogenics, right? So um, it, just, it's, it, it definitely sets a different tone, but, um, but nonetheless, it is an introspective um, journey. When, when you utilize any of these type of natural remedies to, uh, to learn more about yourself and clean your operating system, as we call it. So if you're not, um, before we switch over from the mushrooms, Satya Therapeutics on Instagram, <laughs> check them out. That's our page. Uh, we'll treat you well. So you got to fly in. What's it Oregon. called? Spell it out. Satya. Oh, man, you're killing me. S A T Y A and then Therapeutics. <laughs> F you, fuck you. F you. You know what? Uh, you don't have it on your notes. Pull <laughs> all that shit. Don't you use chat GPT? You gotta... <laughs> Holy fuck, man. <laughs> I can't with you, David. I love you, uh, bro. Hey, S A T Y A Therapeutics. That's it. That's, that's, that's what we're leaving at. Google me, bitch. <laughs> Fucking David, bro. That's, so that's my business partner. <laughs> I do business. I don't spell. <laughs> it, dude. What what are ancillary businesses? Um. Well, I guess I'll I'll start with that. For us, this is an ancillary business, right? Ancillary businesses is businesses that are directly involved as far as holding a license, right? So they're not plant touching. And also. plant touching, but yeah, pretend, mm. and specifically, again, not holding a license, right? Having a nursery, cultivation, distribution, micro business, dispensary, um, delivery, you know, on site consumption, um, all those licenses that are available. Um, anything that supports and services that those licenses are ancillary businesses. So mm -hmm. for us, we're looking to, to be able to support as as uh, ancillary business through the cultivation side by selling all these you know products that we sell but also provide an ancillary support system for uh, education for the workforce that is needed um to actually make this industry successful right so this is why we do cultivation classes we do processing classes and we're doing butt tending classes um in order for us to um to be able to hopefully help um onboard and uh, educate those individuals that are needed to be able to actually run a dispensary, to actually run a cultivation site, right? Like, it's not just gonna be run by robots or AI as we're laughing about it, right? We're talking, but that's not gonna happen, right? So, so our goal, you know, has been to be able to educate the community around that. And then secondly, and David will jump into this more so, is just the trades, right? Um, you know, we do, you know, he's a master HVAC, uh, you know, uh, well, what is it called? Yes, I guess Master HVAC. I'm a quadruple OG. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I want to hear that. Yeah, I, 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 do, I do HVAC. Uh, that was my, the first business I owned, and what led me to into cannabis <laughs> so easily was uh, my heat and air conditioning business and you know my background on that. Uh, but an ancillary business is your business now. You're interviewing a company that's related or, or apply for a cannabis license, and you know here you are doing your podcast, and uh, it's an ancillary business. Whoever sells paper to that business is an ancillary business. Um, and lo and behold, everybody will be an ancillary business to to it, including the police, including the you know yeah. everything. That's very that's very true. Security, um, and again for us, you know, since since this point, you know, I'm a carpenter by trade. He's an HVAC, you know, by, by trade. And, um, and these are ancillary businesses that are needed, right? Like you need carpenters to build out these spaces, right? Environmental control. You, know, you need HVAC systems to be able to have- The proper uh, environment. Yeah, the proper environment for a cultivation site or a processing place, right? You know, and you need plumbers, you need ma energy management, you need even down to janitorial services, right? Somebody has to keep the place clean. All right, all these things is, are things that are going to be needed to run because these are, this is going to be a full-fledged bus uh, business, right, or industry. It's not, it doesn't, it's not just people as the way, you know, I guess they perceive it as people just growing it and then hustling and selling, you know, dimes and nickels. Well, I'm, I'm maybe 
aging myself with those yeah, old you, diamond you, nickels out no more. You want to know, eights, eights, eights and quarters. <laughs> but you know what's a yeah. huge problem with that though? Yeah. Like when we talk about ancillary businesses and in the cannabis industry, is the the eye gouging for every single thing that we have to do in the industry. As we it's said like, earlier, anything we do. Right. Oh, well, but it's uh, I want to get a uh, I want to transfer money from here to uh, to the bank. You can't transfer. You need to get a, a a truck to come get it. And now you're subjected to their fees. What? You, right. You have to use their, the bank won't take your cash because mm -hmm. it needs to have the whole record of, um, and even if it does, the custody can. chain of custody needs to be yeah. proven. So, uh, wow. it, it, well, but that's one thing, right? So, but if I get a, a roofer to come check the roof, <laughs> so, oh, what do you guys do? That's why I don't tell nobody what I do anymore, bro. That's why I'm like, I got in the camera. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> the, the roofer's watching the me. Cameras in the hat. The, the <laughs> roofer's watching me. I, I told them we're just a donut shop. <laughs> <laughs> you tell them the roof we got you know it was like 60 grand it's like so i talked to the building owner and the owner twenty four thousand. you know it's like but it's every everybody oh cannabis yeah let's rape them yep and that, that word but yes no nah. not, not good so, you know? so they, they upcharge us they upcharge us for everything everything right so for everything that we do also in the cannabis space we get upcharge Right, and and that's that's also a hardship that 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 we definitely have and to it's unfair with. bro it's unfair Mm -hmm. it's, it's completely unfair but but as, but as usual a little bit but uh no it's good and it's it's but i think it's just something that it's been repeated in history you know um this is prohibition right and you know we i was having a conversation earlier today and it's just like you know talking about the kennedys right the kennedys jfk became who became because he had a lot of money that came from bootlegging right and the bootlegging came from the from the prohibition times that that him and his family was a part of right and this is something in which we're we're in right now and you you know you've seen it right like even even in the in the liquor space right or the the beer space like there's very limited still um selections right you go in there into into a, a deli you go to a restaurant and and uh and it's um something that you you see Right. It's not, you know, you got your Coronas, you got Modelo's, you got your Budweiser's, Bud Lights, you got. And it's the same. But if you look at them, it's the same companies. So it's going to happen here for us. Right. Like they're going to take over. It's not it's not going to not not happen. But our goal and to David's point is is to hopefully try to bring as much as opportunities as we can right now to to the people that, again, that are that look like us, man. You know, if if we could create wealth and and bring in education information to the people we serve is is you know I think the best outcome that we could we could look for and ultimately too like again the triple bottom line where we're not hurting the environment, right? So we're helping the community, keeping the environment healthy, and we're making money, right? Because hundred you know, percent, why not? This is the future. It's happening. Why not educate and help the people? Hundred percent. You know what's crazy about it. we say it's the future? Hemp you, you used to be ordered by law for you to grow mm. hemp. For when you know, when we were in World War One and World War Two, that's why they got in, they made the uniforms, the ropes for the anchors on the ship boats and all the kind of stuff. So it's been around for so long. And it's twenty twenty four and people are still getting locked up over this shit. It's crazy, man. Um but I'm glad we're here and you know, I'm glad that at least we we, we get to live this, right? Yeah, we're we'll living through history. The 80s, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, we are, brother. You said it. Definitely are, man. We're definitely living through history, and, and these type of conversations, man, are, are things that hopefully can uh, help fuel the, um, the acceptance of this, right? And the progression, I guess, a healthy progression, right? Not yep. a toxic one. Um, a healthy progression of this space for us and, and really being able to showcase and encapsulate you know what it means to uh to be involved in this space what it took to get to this space and um and again you know to be involved in this space to still do it responsibly right in a responsible manner and um and again both for the for the industry for the environment and for themselves you don't you know the last thing we want is people taking our information to or what we teach and then getting themselves into trouble right that's not that's not our goal 
Right. Yeah, Fabian, shut off the teleprompter for this guy, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. I, I, I envy this guy. I don't know how he does it. It's incredible. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> shut off the teleprompter. Yo, <laughs> this guy's incredible. We're business for like, baby. Dude, I, I love this guy, bro. We're business for no brother. Oh, I'm over here trying to spell therapeutic. <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, listen, brother. We do we do good together, man. Hell yeah. yeah. We definitely and this definitely is, a brother. How'd you guys meet? Um through my cousin actually. Um in the high school we were um my, so he's a little bit older. Yeah. yeah don't yeah. be deceived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not this hip. He's <laughs> a little bit older than me, but... Motherfucker literally just called me. I know a fuck. <laughs> on a podcast, you son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, so I'm like uh, 16 years old, 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, his cousin Jonathan and I played soccer for a long time, and yeah, it's always been a, a good relationship. It's always been fun. Yeah. Actually, it was too fun. That's where, you know, it was. It really it was, was. It was too fun. We... Yeah. Uh, we partied a lot together. Ah, no, and, come on, Sash. No, I, I, uh, we're not talk about hey, this. He's trying to act like he's serious over here. Like, you look at him, he's like, oh, I look like Jesus Christ and shit. I'm like, no, you don't. You know how long it worked? 20 years <laughs> to work this look. I'm like, the fuck out of here. I'm, like, I'm going to tell the truth, transparency. What? I smoked some weed. Remember what I said? A lot of it, mushrooms. It, it, peels me, it peels me like an onion. Yeah, <laughs> so we, did, we did a lot of that. Tell the truth. Um, no, but, no, but with that, yeah, long time ago, and... Um, you know, well, him, I, I've known uh, Fabian for a long time too. I, they're cousins. Yeah. Uh, I know Fabian. I didn't even know they were cousins, you know. We uh, actually grew up around the corner here. Um, and uh, yeah. I know the other business partner, Dwayne, too. I, yep. I've known him since I'm 19 years old. I'm 36. Uh, Dan is my brother in law, pro, the most pro efficient guy you ever meet. And then Lowe's is uh, Fabian's cousin, too. So it's like a family friend kind of thing. It mm -hmm. just, I don't think that you can find a group. That are, where everybody's so good at what they do, and then they come together, and we still have this brotherhood, friendship, relationship, which helps to not, you know, murder somebody at the end of the day. <laughs> Man, Whether it's me or him or yeah. whoever it is, all right? Yeah, Vice versa. Yeah, we're, we're, being, being it's not easy. Experience. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we, we, dude, I told him, and uh, I told him, oh, shout out to my ex-wife. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm married. I'm married to this dude now. <laughs> I married him like in four different businesses. I got licenses. I got all sorts of shit. I got more money at risk with him than, than her. I'm like, go home. Get out of here. I stay with this guy. <laughs> stay with this guy. And I had long hair at the time, and it was curly. Uh, he, was, <laughs> he was. He was much cuter. He was much cuter. <laughs> was cute. Curly hair it was on my shoulders. You know, Damn. it was easier, easier on the eyes. But, <laughs> but, but interestingly enough, I would say, I would say, man, oh, you know, what did bring us together though was was the the the, the concept and the stuff that that we've been doing, right? Like. You know, he was doing his work, and he came to me and um, um, and asked, you know, not even came to me. Like, we just started talking, right? Like, he was doing his stuff, he was doing his work, and and we just started, you know, having conversations about our... our well, I was in our, Uruguay, and I have this on my, on my Instagram go. account. I actually did another podcast that I talked about this, but... Uh, I was in Uruguay, and he called me, he said, yo, I love what you're doing out there, blah, blah. They're going to open up in New York. You should come here, and uh, we should do business. And one thing that we did have in common, uh, one is, is in the workforce development and education, and one thing that I understand through business is that education is your best path forward to success with any business. So if you educate your customer, you probably have a happy customer and a customer for life. So uh, it made sense at the time. We're friends. You know, we're enthusiastic. We are... We think outside the box, on a, on a, which sometimes is chaotic because, you know, two guys thinking completely out the box. It's like, you know, two dogs going different ways, pulling the team different ways. But, um, but it works. But it works. And uh, we have a mutual, a mutual respect that, you know, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't kill that. So when we, even when we disagree on things, we, we look for a way to respectfully disagree with each other and uh, try, to, try to logically understand what's going on and move forward correctly, you know. And that's why everybody else in the team comes in. And well, not not just there, but I'm saying when those things happen, they come in and they mediate, and you know we have voting sessions and stuff for stuff mm -hmm. like you know. And but that's that's passion, how. Though. But and, and and that's the good thing. Like if we weren't voting about what we're gonna do next, we wouldn't have things to do. 
Mm. You'll be bored doing one thing. Now, we have so much shit to do. We got to vote on what we're going to do next. Mm. That's how busy we are. That's how outside the box we are on everything we do. That's why we try to be first on everywhere we go. Uh, we try to do the best. We bring the best products. We, you know, we try to bring uh, the best uh, shape or form of education that we can bring. We try to deliver it in a way that hasn't been delivered, something that I learned from Alejandro and uh, his expertise in workforce development is on how to deliver information. And that's not through the conventional way. It's not through sitting on the book. Everybody listen to me. Look at the board. Like, even though I do yell like that sometimes. Yeah, but, but it works too. But yeah, um, it's having that connection with the students, being part of the community, being a role model, and letting people know that you don't know everything. That you're here to relay information, but you, you don't know everything. You know that we're all humans. We all, we, we all have, you know, our, our gaps in our knowledge. And, you know, it, it, we're human too, you know? So I think that that's made us successful you yeah. know and when that's what brought us together was that idea man it's uh it was truly uh two friends supporting each other being very enthusiastic of each other's success right um he was very happy about how well i was doing in my business i was very happy about how well he was doing in his business um and then just from that you can see you know we're we're both very energetic right like we we were like you know, we can, and like he said, we come up with ideas and we we like to try them out. You know, he's he's in jujitsu, I'm in boxing, right? Like we we're both in in that in that type of space. You know, freaking one of our other business partners is also in in martial arts as well as a master in that. And and I share that because it's it's something that again for us it's just like that constant creativity and ability to create with each other, um, and then execute right and and be successful is where it became very exciting for us right and when we first started it was just that it was like bro listen man we've been talking it, it, you know it, we've been talking for so long about business opportunities like why shouldn't we not be in business together right like it got to that point where i was like bro like we you know both of us pretty much got to that same conclusion it's like dude like we've been talking about all these opportunities how we would do things differently how we can do this you're doing great i'm doing great da 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 and it got it got to a place where i'm like you know well not i we right talking was like bro like you see what we fight you see <laughs> we <laughs> we don't fight you fight with me puta <laughs> Um, but, um, but, but my point is, is that man, like we, we go, we went through a, a whole process where it really was really organic, no pun intended about the work that we do, but it was really supportive. It was a brotherhood, man. It was, it was besides the work, you know, besides being friends, um, through our lives, it was a moment where we both saw each other being successful in our work and, um, and being excited about it. Right. It wasn't just like, oh, you know kind of blowing smoke up each other's asses we literally were like yo dude yo it's fucking dope that you're doing this keep crushing it man you're doing great same thing with me but i say you're freaking killing it man keep doing it you're doing great and and it was it was that type of conversation organic conversation that got us here um in believing in one another um in the work that we can do as he mentioned that also as we brought the team in as he did because he brought a lot of the other team members into the into into this group was identifying that ability and that camaraderie um, that we could have, and just the, the geniuses that I that we that we say we have that we could all bring to the table. And that's another thing. Uh, it, it, you hear a lot of influencers on Instagram, uh, not to name any, but um, they'll say that in order to be successful nowadays, you need a team. You need a team. You need a team. You need a team. And I tell you, uh, this team is pro efficient. It's probably the this is the MVP team I, I, I always want to be a part of. But at the same time, it took a lot of work individually on our own before we came together. Uh, and for anybody listening that's trying to put a team together, please do not ha do not put the guy you smoke weed with <laughs> in the corner and your team to do business because you're not going to make it. You're just going to sit and smoke weed all day. You got to get the guy who's over there, you know, doing their, their thing. And you have to have some sort of a fear towards that person of, of letting them down you know like yeah. so you have to that kind of respect like oh man i don't want to let these people down so that kind of respect you have to have that so and that comes with years of experience doing business too like uh but on top of everything if you want to be successful in this industry you need a team alone you ain't gonna make i, I see a lot of people uh i saw it on the west coast uh and then you quickly realize how things work and then I come here and I see a lot of people that are like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, oh, I can do this, I can do that, chat GPT this, 
By the time you're done doing all of that, you haven't even started. He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how we got four more. That's how we got four more. Every time Alejandro says, yo, let's do this. I'm like, yo, guys, Alejandro's talking. Listen, we got shit to do. He's going to talk all day. <laughs> He's going to talk all day. We got a teleprompter. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. I'm not bad. You see, this is why I keep, this guy keeps me around, man. It's not, it's not for no reason. <laughs> so what is a certificate of analysis? Uh, COA. Uh, that's certificate of analysis is a certificate that shows you the different uh, things and components of the plan. So there are different tests uh, that are ran through the plan uh, for compliance. And you want potency, so how much cannabinoids, whether it's CBD, CBG, THC, Delta A, Delta 9, whatever cannabinoid you're working with, uh, it'll give you the, the potencies of each cannabinoid. Then you have a, a heavy metals test to test if there's any lingering heavy metals like nickel or um, mercury, whatever it is that it could have been in the soil or they were feeding it. Uh, and then lastly, uh, but not least, will be pesticides. Um, those are your main three. There are other tests, like for mold, uh, that, you know, New York is, it had to be, it was huge here because of the outdoor grows. Uh, I think like 99% of the, of the uh, product that was grown outdoor ended up having mold. It's a normal thing that happens. Uh, I was just recently at a processing facility and they had to remediate all the flour that they're selling. Uh, not the best uh, flour to come out of that, but uh, anyway. A COA uh, or a certificate of analysis for whatever it is that you're testing. Now, uh, we spoke about this many times in our, in our different uh, training sessions. A COA is a customer's right, yeah. basically. Right. When a customer goes into a dispensary, you should ask for a COA. It's usually a QR code where they scan it and it pops up. It has a different landing pages. Uh, where it shows you all the different tests, you know, heavy metals, pesticides, potency, mold tests, um, whatever mold it is they're testing because there are different types of molds. Um, but that should be available to the customer. And that's something the customer doesn't know. The customer doesn't know that they can show it to a dispensary or so, somewhere where they sell it. And I'm, I want to know what's, where, where's the, the, the nutrient fact? No. Is that the, 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 the nutritional facts? The, the nutritional yeah. facts of the, of, the, of the thing. No, it's... Uh, 10% THC are uh, grown organic in, in New York, he says, you know, um, and it has a weed leaf, and that's compliance. You know, I know the paperwork is in the back, and you don't get to see it, but you have access to those things. You, get, you can request to see the COAs before you purchase. Now, if they don't produce it, leave. Get out of there. That's, yep. what, that's what a COA is. And, and, and to his point, it's just, it's, it's literally just like when you look at the back of, uh, of your Advil, Right, your Advil, Tylenol, so even a Bistec, that that uh, safety data. It's pretty much a safety data sheet of sorts, right? Um, for your own safety, right? It gives you all the information that 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 it, you need to understand how the product is going to impact your body, and that's why it's so important for the legalization of this, because you know when you have these legal shops or people like you know hustling they're not producing this and you have no idea what what's in the plant that you're consuming right and uh and that's again with the legalization of the space and the opportunity for for the customer to have access to this information is really important um and i'm sure it's gonna these things are also going to be taken a step further because we all have a, a different cannabinoid uh endocannabinoid system right we each are have different receptors and for people, if they're using this as medicine as well, or for whatever reason, they're going to want to be able to be very specific on the type of cannabis they're purchasing based on their body type and the receptors that they have in order to get the maximum, um, you know, uh, value out of it. One thing that we don't talk about, and we, we skipped over it today, because uh, we talk about the endocannabinoid system and we talk about cannabinoids, but we don't talk about terpenes. And terpenes is, you know, what smells. So, you know, when, when it rains... Those are terpenes. When you peel an orange, when you fart, hey now, <laughs> that's a fart. That's not terpenes. That's just a fart. But um, so terpenes work as an acid to break through your molecular wall and allow the delivery of cannabinoids. So um, a good balance. So a fresh flower that you smoke. Let's say I, got, I have a plant 
I have a flower that's 24% THC. And I'll, I'll save it, right, for a year, two years. So terpenes are very volatile, so they evaporate really quickly. At the minimum presence of heat, they just uh, disappear. So if I smoke that flower that's 24% uh, THC compared to a flower that's 12% THC, but it's fresh, with all the terpenes, I will get much higher with the 12% than I will with the 24%. Uh, just because of the terpenes, the terpenes also, um, you know, it's like hops, you know, beer, you can get, you can get drunk of the smell of beer. It's like the vapor f coming off it's, of it. That's basically what, you know, something like so that. So only the fresh buds would have that because. Well, it depends, though. No, you can, they, you they can escape. save it, they escape it at a certain temperature. It, it also, you know, it's uh, strain specific and, and uh, oil specific, but. Um, also when they dry out, right? They do dry out too, but it won't skip if you dry them out correctly. So keeping a low temperature and not moving them and leave, you know, you burp them and blah, blah, and, and, and you know, you do the process, but you keep them at a low temperature, no light. Um, you should be able to preserve the terpenes. <laughs> Freezing them is the, the best way of doing it. Really? Right. So, and then that will lead into the other process. One of the classes that we got coming up. When is the last one? We got the 15th, the 22nd, and where's our, 29th. The 29th is our manufacturing class here at the store. Um, and we'll be talking about uh, bubble hash and then how to turn bubble hash into a live rosin uh, product. So those live rosin products, in order to do the bubble hash and to do the press, we freeze the flour to preserve it uh, for as long as we need to preserve it, you know, because we're not going to smoke it right away. Um, so freezing your flour is a, good, it's a good idea if you're going to go through that process, right? Do you have to defrost it or you can just crush it and go? No, it goes right into water and ice. We'll put that right into water and ice. Yeah, they got to pay us for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free class, damn it. <laughs> you, you, you have to give a little away for free. Right. So matter of fact, yo, shout out to CWI for you know for, for putting this together with us. Uh the 15th, yeah, the 22nd, sure. and the 29th. Uh, hey, yeah. listen. Yes. I get my I gotta get my I gotta get my points from my yeah, point. He go. gets mad at I, me. If we don't get paid on stuff, people like yo. I, I had to pull out the teleprompter real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. But yeah, so it goes di directly to water and ice. Oh, so, man. yeah, uh, we're gonna do it live here, actually. Yeah, we're, we're, we have flour. You wanna show? Can we? Yeah, can we? And also that way. Gonna... Yeah, let's keep talking. Yeah, no, no, no. He wants to show you some stuff. So you wanna pause? Yeah, yeah. If you want to, just pause. I gotta use the bathroom. Oh, oh yeah. Well, if you guys, then I'll use the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can end it, bro. Yeah, I'll do that just out. Thank you, Alejandro, for holding it down. <laughs> we'll be processing this, processing that. This was it frozen? Wait, oh. No, this hasn't been okay. frozen. We will freeze it. Uh, I haven't done that yet. I, I have to this is it. the um, CBG? CBD. 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 It still has some leaves on it. Oh, the mic. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can talk about this. Yeah, dude, um, this is called Frosted Kush. comes with Phytonics. Um, you need a hemp license to be able to get these seeds. And through my hemp license in Oregon, I, I got thousands of these. And I said, why not? Let's grow it. It's, it's what I could grow legally uh, uh, without any issues for uh, when we have classes. So we did. And you can tell that uh, this and your so-called regular cannabis makes no, has no difference, right? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So, and so do this. Look. Break that bud right there. And you tell me... Tell me what you see. So break it down and you're going to roll it a blood or something. What do you mean what I see? You, not, you see all that powdery white stuff? It's definitely, like it's definitely white on it. Yeah, it's like white. And sticky. It's the same thing. It's, it's your regular flour, full of crystals, yeah. full of terpene, cannabinoids. <laughs> but the cannabinoids are... Uh, CBD, not... Uh, not T well, it has a little bit of THC. 0 0.4, I believe. Um, and what would you recommend this for, this specific strain? So that same plant that you have right there is what we made our creams with. Ah. Correct. And our tinctures with. So when you, uh, let's say you, you smoke a joint of that, some people feel relaxed. Some, if you have high tolerance, you're not going to feel it. But when you extract it and you concentrate it, it becomes potent. You know, you take uh, 100 milligrams of CBD, you're going to feel that. You know, like you, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel a state of uh, relaxation and maybe euphoric. You know, you, you'll sleep uh, for hours. Like you, 
How do you get somebody like an old school, you know, old school mentality, like a mom or a grandma, like his grandma? I'm glad she she actually was open minded to do it. Some people are just so close minded, especially if, if they're religious. They think it's a drug. Don't even mention this to me. For example, my mom. Right. So, but look at the age groups, right? And look at what happened. This happened when when Reagan and the 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 war on drugs started, and then it's that generation that was taught. No, 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 no. But you go to the generation before that, and like the the eighty year olds, and and you they don't even say anything because they've been taught to not say. Those guys don't say nothing. And then you look at them, and they're like, "Yeah, no, I, I used to do that." You know, when they're in the deathbed, oh yeah, man, I used to have orgies and smoke weed, and it's crazy. The older the, dude, my parents' age did nothing. The most boring people, alcoholics. My parents' generations are the worst, man. Yeah. But uh, the generation before them, I th you know, that was like, yeah, you know... The hippies, right? The hippies. Yeah, yeah, 50s and 60s, you know, yeah. after, right after the war happened and stuff like that. And I, I wasn't even here, but I, I met a lot of them in, in Oregon. Oregon has a large population of veterans. Salute to all of them out there. Um, and, man, the stories you hear, and uh, it's... Yeah, I think it's generational. Um, so in order to get them out of that, Again, I had to open up five companies before my father smoked weed with me. So, you know, you got some work to do, bro. <laughs> so it made him a believer after years of this happening? Yeah, he would never do it. And then, he, uh, you know, like I said before, now he quit drinking and, you know, he only smokes weed and he's like a holistic kind of man. And, um, he quit drinking after he started smoking, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a healthier option. Yeah, especially after you have a few beers and then you smoke. <laughs> You're like, yo, I'm never drinking again. <laughs> 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 when you crossfade like that. But uh, yeah, no, he, he, he found that that's a better way to pass the time. You know, at the end of the day, we drink also because of anxiety. We drink depression. We try to numb ourselves. We do the same thing with weed. We do the same thing with any other drug that we take. To distract ourselves, to numb ourselves, to, to not face living. reality. A hundred percent. So... And that's what the drug that was available for that generation, you know? 100%. Uh, it, it, it was legal. There. It was legal, so exactly. why not? They had just made it legal. Yeah. So much money available for it to, yep. to be made. It's what they pushed. They're still pushing it. Alejandro made a great point uh, when it comes down to marketing. You go <laughs> you go to a restaurant and you got Modelo, Corona, Budweiser. You have all the drinks, Patron. Everything is there right in front of you. Kills you. No problem. No problem. But cannabis, we can't have a weed leaf on the window. Nah. We, need, we have isolated spaces for on-site consumption. They said, bro, I get fucked up with three, three Hennessy's and, you know, two whiskeys. <laughs> you know, why can't I get fucked up with, a, you know, a, a dessert? Yeah. While I'm sitting here, I'm going to laugh. What am I going to do? I'm just going to laugh the whole time. It's just, it's just too new. That's what it is. It's right. So but, new. but then they're required to get a license for that. Now, I get it. You need a license to serve alcohol, too. But you shouldn't, uh, and maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Uh, you can only have an on-site consumption. It's not like a restaurant can get an on-site consumption uh, license and they're going to uh, just sell edibles. Maybe not yet. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Hopefully, we'll get to a, a time in which you don't have to go to a place that's only for on-site consumption when you can just walk into a restaurant and be like, no, I don't want a Corona, but I want uh, uh, OG Kush, cross, blah, 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 with my, my key lamb pie. You know, I want that honey you know, spread on my key. Or even a mixed drink. Uh, a mixed At the drink. bar. Alcohol? Nah, I'd rather have the, the THC drink. Exactly. I have a Straight honey up. tea with THC, like whatever Straight it is. Up, yeah. yeah, we should be able to have Eventually. That. I think it's just too new where it's not happening yet, but but eventually. Yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of psychedelics, have you done anything else besides mushrooms? Mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, DMT. Uh, How'd you smoke it? On a pipe. Okay. Smoked on a pipe. Uh, powder form. After we uh, had smoked a lot of weed. And man, it was the longest trip and the shortest at the same time. You felt like it was long, but it was really less than 20 minutes. 15 minutes, maybe. It was 15 but I was minutes. there for like six months. Yeah, right? Like it was crazy. I explain what, 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 what you saw. Did you speak to any entities or anything? Dude, I was married. And I had like this whole life going on, and uh, I do this. I don't know, bro. It's it's like mushrooms. Boy. When I take mushrooms too, uh, the experiences that I go through, and I want to explain what they were, but something don't let me talk. Like I know exactly what happened, and I know exactly what I want to say, 
but it just won't let me like tell you. And it's like you have to experience it for yourself. Is yeah. it that you, you can't explain it in English? No. I mean, or Spanish. You can't explain it in words. <laughs> it's a spiritual feeling, right? Oh, I was going to take offense to my No, accent. no, no. No, <laughs> no it, yeah. It's can, that words can't explain the feeling because no, it's a spiritual they, feeling. I could explain what the things I saw, but it won't. I, I'm like not allowed to say these things. Like it's like almost like it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but I, it's, I, it's such a personal journey. You have to go through it. Like it sounds crazy if I told you a story. You'd be like, this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he was married for six months and 15 minutes. <laughs> See how crazy that sounds? That's why I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I understand, though. I understand. Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand. yeah. So if you want to share, I understand. Yeah, no, nah, nah, I'm good. Uh, right there. <laughs> I don't even know what I walked back into, bro. <laughs> Psychedelics. <laughs> I walked away for like five seconds, bro. And I walked back. I don't even want to talk. I walked back to mama. Gonna, I ain't saying shit. <laughs> Go fuck. <laughs> where did we, we we played it off like it was a conversation? Do, it was you. It was you. Where do we go, bro? <laughs> oh man, I wanted to ask about the name. How did you guys before you answer? How did you guys come up with the name? But it might just be me. Does the new grow have to do with neuro? Yes, of course. The gentleman behind the scenes that you don't see actually came up with the nice. I thought I was just making things new up. Neuro, new grow, baby. All right, I like it. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good uh, shit. We, we, we threw out a whole bunch of ideas. The, the New Grow Academy, uh, that's the, the original name. And for bureaucracy bullshit, we couldn't have the name. And uh, it ended up being, I didn't agree with the New Grow Center in the beginning, but. You know, <laughs> I didn't agree with a lot of things. Now, now I love it. It's like, you know, I fucking love this thing. Uh, but yeah, the, the word on play was, uh, was great. And um, uh, I think Dan did a great job and his team. To, to create the brand, create the logo, create, you know, the, the whole entity as, as it is. So um, collectively, you know, th there was a few misunderstandings also, you know, with, with the wording around. So we had to change a few things. So. <laughs> Trust me. We don't want to talk about that here either. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't going to bring it up, so I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> So we're nearing the end of the podcast. Can you guys please let the people know where they can find you? If you have any last advice you'd like to give the people and anything you have coming up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, first of all, man. The floor is yours. <laughs> the floor is yours. I'm going to let this motherfucker <laughs> body me. <laughs> this is the real height, guys. <laughs> this is the real height. <laughs> I don't give I don't stand up straight. <laughs> stand up, Alex. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, you're funny, my brother. I got it. Um, but this is the kind of brotherhood you see. You see, we are business owners, and at the same time, we're, you know, we're like brothers. Uh, brothers that fight and love each other, just like any other ones. Um, and they can find the New Girl Center at 365B North Avenue. 365. It's 365. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Let's start this again. Edit this part. <laughs> I Yo, stick to the brand idea. <laughs> Let me do the podcast. <laughs> Piggy. Don't ever, <laughs> Yo, don't ever. Yo, this is bad for you, bro. You're never going to live this shit down. I tell you that right now. <laughs> It, it's a brotherhood, these guys. It's, it's a, a brotherhood. brotherhood. <laughs> so let me repeat it. 365 B North Avenue, New Rochelle, New York, 10801. If you want to send a check or you know whatever it is you want to send over, uh, we're here. And that's about it. Thank you for having us, man. I don't Thanks, know, Al, if you want to recap no, I, anything. I, I appreciate you, brother. Thank there's you. No, there's no more words. Really awesome. tele no, no, so. I'm not reading more. Where, where, oh, where can they find you? The IG, the website? Yeah, on IG is uh, the New Grow Center. So it's not D A, it's T H E, right? Uh, the New Grow Center. Uh, Facebook, uh, you, they can go to our website. We have a bunch of free information on our website. Uh, you can go to our, our calendar and, and find you know when our, our next class is coming up. We're doing a whole bunch of. We have three classes coming up. Like I mentioned before, with CWI, uh, their powerhouse classes. Uh, it's free to the public. But, hey, don't be fooled. We're getting paid good money to do this, all right? <laughs> Real good money to do this. So you show up or don't show up, it's up to you. We, we, are, we have to deliver. Scan the QR code. 
been trying my best here, guys. I'm winning. I'm winning. So yeah, those three classes you can you can pull up. Uh, we have other events coming up soon. We have uh, we're doing a uh, uh, virtual classes through Hud uh, Hudson Valley Community College. Uh, we just finished doing uh, some stuff with uh, EOC up in Troy. Incredible project that we did over there. With uh, we built that a uh, full container into a grow operation. Uh, and now we got the opportunity to work with uh, Hudson Valley Community College, and we have some Zoom classes that we're going to be doing through them. So it's accessible to anybody and everybody anywhere in the world to be able to join in. So uh, we're not limited to, to seating or a room. Nice. And um, we're going to talk about ancillary businesses. We're going to talk about plant science. We're going to talk about a little bit about everything that we talked about today. We, we touched on, but we're, we're going to depth. Amazing. Any last words? No, I'm just, again, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having us, man. This was really exciting. Um, I think these things are really important also for us to, um, to uh, I guess, re-inspire ourselves, right? Um, thinking the stuff that we've been through, the things that we've done, what, what's taken to get us here. Um, it hasn't been an easy ride. Um, and also the fun, right? I appreciate the fun that we're having. We've been laughing a lot. And it was a hell of a, an experience. And... Um, and just appreciate you taking the time, brother, to um, to uh, to meet us, put us out there, um, and expose us to to your community as well. I really appreciate that, man. And I hope that this podcast also brings you more more audience, and and is also something that your audience finds of value. And if there's anything else that you need from us, and any other potential conversations you would like to have around this, or whatever it is, you know, you can see, man, we have a good time here. And, uh, Definitely. and next time we'll we'll have some edibles or, or some <laughs> other thing. Or we could do, uh, you know, see what how uh, the hallucinogens. <laughs> don't, don't touch me. Just touch me. I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, I appreciate the you. The new grow center. If you have any idea that you want to jump into this, they got it all. They, they got everything you need. Come check them out. They're here in New Rochelle, New York. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Peace and love.